The classic 1988 film Beetlejuice was never intended to cater to very young audiences, but it wiggled its way into their awareness like a sandworm in the desert. If you loved Beetlejuice as a kid and haven't revisited it in a while, here are some things that just might surprise you. When Adam and Barbara Maitland discover that they are ghosts and that newcomers have bought their home, they travel to the land of the dead in an attempt to get some assistance. Before they can see anyone about getting help, they have to take a number and a seat in an afterlife waiting room. At the end of the movie, viewers see Beetlejuice in the same room, stuck with a terminally long wait. This scene plays on the joke of waiting rooms everywhere, which many young viewers might not have a lot of experience with. But that's not the most adult element of the sequence. It also showcases a parade of victims of various deaths that only a very twisted child would immediately grasp. There is a magician's assistant who has been cut in two, and a jungle explorer with a shrunken head. Sitting right next to Adam is a man who looks like he's been burned to a crisp. You want a cigarette? Oh no, thank you. I'm trying to cut down myself. While these dead characters are intended to be amusing, it's probably for the best that young viewers don't really understand how gruesome or horrible their deaths were. Lydia Dietz's stepmother, Delia, is a high-class, high-maintenance sculptor from New York. Despite objections from her husband, Charles, a former real estate developer, she seeks to transform their cozy Connecticut home into a modern upscale abode. With the help of an interior designer named Otho, the two dig into their new project with nothing but disdain for the charming house they're about to destroy. Oh, look, an indoor outhouse. Understandably, this is heartbreaking for Adam and Barbara, since they'll never get to grow old in the house they worked so hard to make their own. Connecticut is notorious for having high-end property that's purchased by the rich and famous. For example, rapper 50 Cent recently sold his Connecticut mansion for $2.9 million. In Beetlejuice, director Tim Burton pokes fun at the wealthy invaders from out of state who bluster into a sleepy town and drive up the property value. This type of reference requires a working knowledge of social politics and real estate anxieties in order to really appreciate it, something that most young viewers won't readily understand. Perfectly portrayed by Michael Keaton, the character of Beetlejuice is a lot in every sense of the word. He's loud, he's brash, he's completely over the top. I'm the ghost with the most, babe. Most of the things he says in his used car salesman patter require some solid pop culture background. He claims that The Exorcist keeps getting funnier every time he sees it, but hopefully young viewers haven't seen that movie yet. He also shouts, go ahead, make my millennium, in a clear reference to the Dirty Harry movie set in Impact, another film that most kids probably wouldn't be too familiar with. And of course, throughout the entire movie, Beetlejuice is a completely unapologetic perv. Hey, hey! Excuse me! What? He's the kind of ghost you definitely don't want hanging around your teenage daughter. Or your teenage son, for that matter. This is played for laughs, but adult viewers will be creeped out by his treatment of Lydia, forcing her into a marriage and referencing his intentions for their wedding night. Basically, Beetlejuice is the least kid-friendly part of Beetlejuice. Though the name Beetlejuice sounds appropriately sinister for the movie's main man, it's also the name of a star in the constellation Orion. Some translations of the name, which comes from Arabic, indicate that it means armpit of Orion, which kind of makes sense for a guy with such questionable personal hygiene. <laughs> Save that guy for later. Otherwise, the use of a star's name and the actual sound of it lends to a kind of mystical, magical, witchy element to a character who is decidedly none of those things. Though Lydia and her fascination with the dead might qualify as sufficiently witchy. This is one of those little factoids that adults with an eye for the skies would probably recognize long before their younger counterparts. When a special effect is done well, hopefully the audience doesn't even notice it. Certainly, kids who are already prone to suspending their disbelief are willing to accept bizarre visuals without question, and the visuals in this film, along with everything else, are bizarre in the best possible way. From the Maitland's stretched-out faces to shrimp cocktails attacking dinner guests, the effects crew on this film did an incredible job. Beetlejuice even won the Academy Award for Best Makeup in 1989, a tribute not only to Keaton's unrecognizable visage, but also the imaginative visual treatment of the Maitland's and all the inhabitants of the waiting room. Any adult who remembers a time before CGI can appreciate all the practical effects and stop motion that went into this classic film. Winona Ryder has come back in a big way with her role as Joyce Byers in Netflix's Stranger Things. 
To this end, some young viewers might not realize that she's been a major star for decades. Her Stranger Things co-star, Priya Ferguson, admits that she didn't know who Ryder was before she met her on set, but older fans will know that Beetlejuice provided Ryder with her breakthrough role, which would lead her to a very successful and diverse screen career. Ryder was only 17 years old when she played Lydia, who was supposed to be even younger, but there was something about the actress that absolutely clicked with her character. I myself am strange and unusual. The year after Beetlejuice was released, she starred in Heathers, further cementing her status as a rising young star. Possessing the gift of hindsight, adult viewers of Beetlejuice today can probably see Ryder's acting trajectory in ways that younger audiences might not appreciate. Most kids today would never guess that the fun-loving Beetlejuice and the crime-fighting Batman were both portrayed by the same actor, Michael Keaton. Completely caked in makeup and spouting euphemisms, Keaton's Beetlejuice has more in common with Gotham's infamous Joker than its Dark Knight. But just one year after Beetlejuice, Keaton brooded his way through 1989's Batman and nailed the serious nature of both Bruce Wayne and the Caped Crusader. It's also hard to say if young viewers would easily recognize him as Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming. With a range that stretches from wacky physical comedy to thoughtful action films and everything in between, nobody should be surprised that Keaton has had such a long and acclaimed career. You're working with a professional here! Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about classic movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.